Hi, Kupo, and welcome to Bone Epic Geek, a fun twist on a cooking show where three geeky friends come together to bring our favorite fandoms to life by whipping up tasty dishes in our home kitchens based on and inspired by our favorite games, shows, movies, and more. I'm Rach. I'm Nora. I'm Jeremy. And we're three geeks who play with our food. Welcome to our fifth episode and the first episode of this year where we actually had to put on clothes instead of cooking our pajamas. Yeah. Uh, this episode, we are talking all about Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. mostly focusing on 14, um, but the world of Final Fantasy. Yeah, it's got a long history. started out in the 80s, and uh, the name used to have a really cool story where the studio was going to go bankrupt and they had enough... Uh, time to make one more game, so they called it Final Fantasy, and so pulled them out of bankruptcy. That's really cool. It is cool, uh, and they were suffering uh, financial issues back then. But I just read an article that the uh, creator of it actually was just looking for any kind of name that would uh, shorten to FF, because apparently it sounds cool in Japanese. Uh, they wanted fighting fantasy, but uh, they couldn't get it for trademark reasons. And Final was a really cool English word that a lot of Japanese knew. So they went with that instead. So we could have just had French fry 14 and it would have yes. just served them just as well. Okay, yes, the, cool. The creator cool. himself said any FF would have worked. Okay, fast forward. French fry. Fast and Furious. Freaky Friends. Yes. Anyway. Vin, um, Vin Diesel in an RPG would be great. Uh, so yeah, Final Fantasy uh, is a game that uh, I really got into Final Fantasy 14 as a WoW refugee. Before that, um, I don't have a lot of Final Fantasy experience. Uh, I randomly played 10-2, I think, while I was in law school. Um, and I played a lot of Kingdom Hearts, which has some overlap with Final Fantasy, but I think it is not technically considered a Final Fantasy pro- property. Uh, I got in Final Fantasy with Final Fantasy 2 in the US. It was 4 in wow. Japan. Uh, I remember my mom brought it home from a yard sale one morning and it had a $2 nice. sticker on it. Nice. And I started playing that. My friend Ben got Final Fantasy 3 and we traded back and forth. And, um, 3 was 6 uh, in Japan is by far the best Final Fantasy. I will argue anyone on that. Um, so go for it. Seven's Come over- on and fight Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag yeah. vote up a geek. I'm going to make it even worse. Seven's overrated. Sorry. Got bored after the first disc. Don't come for uh, us. No, don't, don't. <laughs> Jeremy's reviews do not reflect the views of Bon Appetit. Geek. Here, I'll be even more controversial. Don't do oh it! My don't! <laughs> Muted for your protection. I liked 13. <laughs> oh, okay. 13 was great. Lightning was fun. Snow was good. Uh, I like the snow. dance trading system, I think, worked really well. It was very railroady. It was. I'll admit that. But I like 13. I think railroad games have their place. Uh, but I don't think 14 is a railroad game. It's not. Uh, I love about it um, that, I mean, you, you have to play the main story quest to advance certain things. And I like that about it because uh, I tend to just get lost in games and ignore the main story for forever. And I like that it forces you to play that main story if you want to get your mount, if you want to unlock certain things, if you want to get a house, all of that. So I like that about it, but I also like the freedom to do what I want. Um, I came over to Final Fantasy XIV as a WoW refugee, uh, and it's been the best experience, I yeah, think. Yeah. Um, the community is just so much better, uh, it's so less friendly. toxic, yeah, it's, so friendly. it's friendly, um, I like that a lot. I'm not I think, scared to join a group, <laughs> Oh, dungeons have been so much better. Uh, I have not been called lots of beep, beep, yeah. beep, beep, Angel beep, mom. or beep, uh, any time here. Uh, people just have helpful tips and say nice things. and. It's great. Thanks, Final it. Fantasy community. Thanks for not being toxic. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I like I like everything about it. I've got uh, two characters, which is not really necessary, I don't think, in Final Fantasy. Which another thing I like about it is that you can really do everything with one character. But I'm still, uh, I guess, in that well mindset. Yeah. I want to play every race. Uh, make it. I love character creation. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I have two that I play primarily. I have uh, Vera. 
Bard. Uh, I love her. Uh, I, she derails the whole game, though. I, ever since I unlocked the ability to play music, that's all I want to do now. So Jeremy will be like, let's go quest. And I'm like, wait, I have to play Old Town Road for the third time for these people. Like it. So it doesn't help. Uh, and then I've got a Black Mage, uh, an Aura, uh, Aura, Aura. I can't pronounce anything. Uh, so if I don't hear it pronounced a lot, and that's, that's one thing I'll say about Final Fantasy, is you don't hear a ton of voice acting. Which is fine, it's still a good game, but it also means I'm going to pronounce everything terribly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Aura, Aura, I don't know how to say it, but I've got that uh, as a black mage, and that's super fun, too. Uh, that kind of felt the warlock fix that I wanted when I came oh, over, yeah. from, uh, over from WoW. Yeah, same. I came from WoW. It was really my first uh, Final Fantasy game. I am loving it, but I was in that habit, and the first thing I did would make made one of these pictures. One of each race and class. So uh, I tested out a lot. I think now I'm really liking my um, archer, the coat, the Cody. You know, the cute one, the little the cat people, the cat, the cat people. people. Yes, uh, archer. Uh, but I think I'm going to switch to a reaper from the new expansion. Uh, it sounds it sounds really cool. So I'm looking forward to that. I, I love that too. That there's just these. You can just class into something else like later like my <clears throat> final fantasy character can just have a mid left crisis and a career change i like that i don't have to create a whole new character to play like a new class in the expansion and i mm -hmm. like that a lot especially after you gather things like you've got your favorite outfits and all your bags are organized yeah i like that mm -hmm. i too am an altaholic uh <laughs> so my main is an aura summoner i was actually really happy with the character creation because I could make him look like a tiefling and I based him on my D&D character that I'm running in your campaign, uh, Sagresh. I went Hrothgar so I could have like this big burly melee guy and then I have a uh, gnome named Blimp who's a rogue slash healer uh, just to do some more uh, physical DPS stuff but I want the casting DPS to be on my aura. I tried to recreate my D&D character at first, uh, so I play a shifter, uh, so she's a fox person. I was like, oh good, Miko, this is perfect, and I tried to make her like almost as close as possible. She was a druid, and so I was like, oh, I'm going to try Conjurer. That seems uh, healing, not for me. Uh, more power to everyone who does it. Yeah, uh, I will just stick to doing the pew-pews. Uh, that's, that's for me. Uh, and the bard buffs a little bit, but just healing, no, and not for me. Fine. Bunch yeah, of fun in they're so game. fun, so fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, to switch gears a little bit, uh, one other thing that I really like about Final Fantasy is the way they handle professions. Um, it actually feels like an integral part of the game. There's something fun to do. Mm -hmm. It's not just like I gotta grind this grind out this so out. I can max this out and then or be able to have these potions so I don't wipe in a dungeon. How many fish feast did I fish <laughs> <laughs> for hours just watching TV fishing? <laughs> I, uh, I was a tailor in WoW, and there were so many things I would just like, same pair of pants 46 <laughs> yeah. times, now I'm max level, this doesn't do any good, cool, thanks. But we did it happily. <clears throat> we did, uh, yeah, not, not to say I never had fun in WoW, I did. But... I'm still bitter you can't skin Torin. It should have been a thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think that you can uh, skin the playable can't races like, in no, Final no, Fantasy no. either, so friends, sorry, so. Uh, sorry that didn't work out for you. Uh, but no, I really like it. Um, I like uh, I like that I was able to just jump in and like run with the culinary profession, and I like that it doesn't have to really like match what I'm doing with like the character and her questing or her level. I can like way out level my character, and it's fun. Uh, I mean, you need to be able to get ingredients somewhere, but that's what helpful guilds are for. Um, so I really like that. I, I've just tried to like go off with the with the professions that I think are really fun and culinary is one of them. Obviously, I like culinary. Obviously, in real life, I wouldn't be doing a cooking show. Yeah. Uh, so that was uh, one of the first things I really wanted to rush in and do is, is start playing with those professions, and it's been worth it to me. Yeah. So all of our recipes came from In Walker expansion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We were very excited about that, uh, so we wanted to pull those out. Um, and I think we came up with some really fun stuff. Um, I started us out with the island Mikabob, um, and that's always a tough one for me because Mikabob, Mikata, it, it seems to me like it, <laughs> it is made out of friends, so maybe that'll get you your uh, tar and fix. Um, but no, looking it's at the ingredients, yeah. <laughs> um, 
But looking at the ingredients for it, uh, it's not made out of meat coats or meat coates, however you are supposed to say that, that I can't. Uh, it, it was made out of hamsa, which is a bird. Um, in the real world, those are like aquatic birds. In Final Fantasy, they look like a fat dodo. Um, I decided to go with chicken, because uh, that's Same. easy to find. <laughs> it's a good poultry. Um, the kebabs had uh, paprika, so like bell peppers, and mushrooms on them, and then like fire crystals and stuff. Uh, so the fire crystal I'm using is my oven, and uh, I added some bell peppers, some onions. Uh, we made, we noticed that a lot of the uh, recipes in Inwalker had like a Mediterranean or Middle Eastern flair mm -hmm. to them. Uh, me too, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I decided to do this in like a Greek marinade to make a tzatziki sauce with it. Um, I think it's I think it's going to be really good, um, even if it's not made out of other player characters and you don't get to eat your friends. I think you'll enjoy it. All right. I've never played on dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then next up is going to be the main course, which is a yakao moussaka. Um, this is just, it's going to be a quick version of the more traditional, we're not going to make the bechamel sauce, um, but I, I, it's going to be good. Lots of cheese. Yeah, we got, we have in Walker to play, uh, so we yeah. don't have time to make a bechamel time. sauce. Make a bechamel sauce. So. <laughs> but no, it's going to be delicious, I'm looking forward to it. And we're using lamb for the yes. cacao? Yeah, nice. brown nice. lamb. Yeah, so for the drinks, uh, for the cocktail, I went with happiness juice. Uh, happiness nice. juice is carrot juice, which most people think of that like, I don't know. Uh, so I'm spicing it up with some mezcal, so you get that smoky tequila flavor, uh, some ginger, and some cinnamon syrup. Ooh, that's cinnamon that sounds syrup. Yeah, super good. Yeah. Cinnamon syrup, yes. Uh, for the mocktail, I made an Amra Lassi. I can't find Amras because apparently they are a South uh, Eastern European fruit. Or, sorry, not European, Asian, Southeast Asian fruit mm -hmm. uh, that I just couldn't find locally. Uh, they're also called hog plums. But from hog what plums. I can tell okay. is uh, when they ripen, they turn yellow and taste sweet like a mango. So uh, I did a mango lossy and Ooh, threw nice. in some uh, lime juice to make it more sour. Nice, so, nice. Um, trying to recreate the amara as best as I can. That'll be fun. That'll be fun to taste. Um, well, for our dessert, we went for the uh, Sideritis cookie. Uh, I had never heard of Sideritis before. I yeah. thought it was a disease, and I thought it was really weird uh, that <laughs> we had uh, some sort of itis cookie <laughs> for dessert. <laughs> um, but then as I started uh, looking at the recipes and figuring out the ingredients that were needed uh, so that we could craft them uh, in the game and here in the real world, uh, I figured out that Sideritis was a tea. Uh, it's also called mountain tea, um, and uh, it's got kind of a chamomile flavor, but a little earthier. Uh, so we came up with essentially like a tea biscuit or a tea shortbread. Yes. Um, it has honey. honey. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so it'd be cool. It'd be really good. Uh, the tea is uh, very large and floral, so it's interesting yeah. to work with. Uh, it uh, kind of reminds me of our previous episode when we were working with soy curls. I don't know about yeah, this. Yeah, uh, came in the, in the mail. I was like, ooh. Yeah, I was like, this ow. is potpourri. This is potpourri. <laughs> yes. I cannot cook with this. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it has worked. And it, when you grind it in the coffee grinder, it, it's like fluff. It's almost fluffy. But yeah, we, we 3D printed a cookie cutter for this yes. that is the shape of a Moogle. So I'm excited to see how that works out. Yeah, uh, I am excited to have found uh, files to make cookie cutters. Uh, I'm going to make cactuars and all sorts of stuff now. Oh, looking forward to all that. Uh, Spriggan, and I'll make little clicky noises every time <laughs> I serve the cookies. I have the Spriggan mount, and it drives him crazy. He's like, Whoa, what are you doing? What's all that clicking sound? It's my little mount. Like, it sounds like she's just in there clicking. Nice. Is he going to say something? <laughs> I love it. Um, sure that never happens. Yeah. No. Um, but no, that uh, that's what we've put together for this. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. Um, hopefully everything will turn out well. Um, it seems like a small, short show in comparison to that big brunch that we just did for yes. our last episode. Yes. But uh, I think it's all going to be super tasty. Oh yeah, I mean, everything. Kebabs, lamb, the happy juice. I do have some bad news. It looks like there's a queue of about 500 for the oven. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Fade to black. Oh well. So we're gonna uh, wait here for a couple yeah, hours. Yeah, we're gonna go get in the queue for the oven. Uh, then we'll cook. <laughs> hey friends, so we are gonna 
get started on our first recipe for our Final Fantasy meal, our Island Mie Kebab. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is just make a nice marinade and get our hamsa, um, which in this case is chicken, into that marinade uh, just to hang out and let all those flavors kind of mush together and marinate, if you will. So uh, to make our marinade, we are going to need a quarter cup of olive oil. We're going to add uh, about three tablespoons of lemon juice. You can use fresh or you can use from a bottle. This is from a bottle. I always take the easy route when I can. Uh, we're going to use a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. That is different from like red cooking wine. Uh, the vinegar actually is vinegary, so it'll give it a sourness that you won't get if you just do a cooking wine. We're going to do three tablespoons of minced garlic. These are going to be nice and garlicky. And then we've got an herb mixture here. Uh, quite a few herbs in this bowl. We've got two and a half teaspoons of dried oregano, one and a half teaspoons of dried basil, a half teaspoon of dried thyme, a half teaspoon of ground coriander, and then some salt and pepper. Uh, we've got about three quarters tablespoons of salt and a tablespoon? Teaspoons. Don't put three quarters tablespoon salt in there. It will be disgusting. Three quarters teaspoons of salt and about a half teaspoon of ground black pepper. So we're going to add that and then just kind of whisk it all together just to get everything good and mixed up. Now we're going to take our marinade and our chicken. We're going to take a big Ziploc bag. This is a gallon size. Um, if you don't have that, you can use smaller. You probably just want to do this in batches and do a couple. So we're just going to add our chicken to that bag and then we're going to pour the marinade on top of it. Shake it, squeeze it, mush it around so that the marinade gets on every little chunk of chicken. Um, our chicken, we are using about two and a half pounds of chicken breast. These are chunked into uh, just medium sized cubes. Um, it's a kebab, so think about the size of meat that you like to bite into when you're having that. And uh, we're just going to dump this in. Give it a good squash and shake. And then we're going to let that sit to marinate for 45 minutes or more. Um, this is not a recipe that will be hurt by a long marinade. Uh, so if you want to, you know, get your chicken in the marinade in the morning and have your recipe at night, uh, totally fine to do that, but give it at least 45 minutes to give all the flavors time to incorporate into the chicken. So we'll be back for the next step once this has had time to marinate. Okay, so we've marinated our chicken. Uh, I've let this go for about an hour and a half at this point, but as long as you've got it for at least 45 minutes, you are good to go. So the next thing that we're going to do is to um, go ahead and start building the kebab. So we're going to take our veggies. I've got three zucchini here. Uh, they're kind of the small ones. Um, I've got three of those cut into round discs. I've got two red bell peppers cut into larger chunks. I've got a whole red onion, again, cut into larger bits. And I've got just some plain white mushrooms. Uh, and I've kept those whole. If you've got big mushrooms that you're using for this, you might want to cut them in half. Um, so I'm going to take all of these veggies and just dump them into a large bowl. Whoops. Knocking things around, getting musical with my prep dishes. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil and a few more herbs another half teaspoon of oregano and another half teaspoon of basil so I'm just going to sprinkle this around and then just kind of mix this up together this just gives a good flavorful coating onto the veggies because uh, what we don't want is to have really tasty flavorful chicken from where it's set in that marinade and then veggies with like no herb or any other flavor. Um, so we're just going to get these veggies uh, with a good herby flavor. Make sure you got a little bit. Uh, you can see kind of the specks from the basil and oregano. Make sure you got a little bit on each veggie. And then we're just going to start building our skewers. 
So I am using uh, these wooden skewers um, that I just got at the store. These are really cheap. You can get like a hundred pack for a couple of dollars. What I've done is soaked them. I actually took the bag that they came in, filled it full of water, and then stuck it down in the thermos so they could stay uh, in the water. And it's really important to get them soaked or moistened before you load them up full of food and then stick them in the oven or on a grill. Because uh, if you don't, they're wooden. They could very well just catch fire, uh, and that's not what we want. So we're just going to pull a stick out. Uh, we'll just kind of shake it out a little bit to get some of the moisture off of it. And then set this aside. And then we just start loading them up. So what I like to do is just kind of alternate the different veggies. So we'll start with a mushroom, maybe add a zucchini slice, slice of red pepper, a little chunk of onion, and a piece or two of chicken. And we'll just alternate back and forth like that. It doesn't have to be precise. Uh, I tend to get a little like... Uh, organized about it and try to keep the same pattern but that's not that doesn't matter at all so just uh, alternate veggies and chicken uh, as much chicken or as much veggies as you like uh, you know I like to do where there's a lot of veggies and a little bit of meat I think that keeps it nice and balanced uh, but if you want mostly a meat skewer with just a tiny bit of veggie you can definitely do that too um, we're using some of the veggies that were noted to be in the recipe in uh, the culinarian side. Uh, so we had the, the hamsa meat, uh, which we're using chicken for. We had mushrooms and uh, we had paprika. So we're using the be bell pepper for that. Um, but hey, get creative with it. Um, the nice thing about these culinarian recipes is they don't give us tons of details. So it gives us room to play with uh, the idea that, that was originated in the culinarian guide and really come up with something all of our own. So I'm just going to add another piece of chicken and, I don't know, maybe another little bit of zucchini just to cap it off. I always like to have like one of the firmer veggies at the end, and I think this is especially important if you're going to put these on a grill. It kind of helps bookend all of your stuff in there so it's not falling off uh, on your grill. I'm just going to place these on a baking sheet. We're going to do these in the oven, uh, but you can do them either way just as easily. Okay, so as you can see, I have gotten all of these loaded up onto our skewers. They're all a little bit different, but they've all got all of the ingredients there. So we're just going to pop these in the oven. We preheated our oven to 400 degrees, and we're going to bake them for 16 to 22 minutes. I like to kind of pull them out halfway through and just kind of rotate the skewers a little bit just to make sure they get evenly cooked on all sides. But that kind of all depends on your oven. Uh, you might not need to do that. We'll see you when these are done. So our kebabs are done. They are ready to eat as soon as you pull them out of the oven or off the grill. Uh, I've just put our tzatziki in a nice little dish. So uh, let's dig in. Oh, I'm so excited. Ooh, come here. So I like a lot of tzatziki, so I just kind of like to spread it all over my kebab. Uh, I know some oh. people prefer to dip. Just whatever you like to do. But I think the more tzatziki, the better for me. I'm a dipper. And uh, I'm just going to eat it right off the stick because it's kebab and that's what we're able to do. Kind of dip. <laughs> mm. Kebab two ways. <laughs> oh my goodness. So good. All those mm. Greek flavors. I'm going to go swimming. And that tzatziki sauce. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not the prettiest tzatziki sauce. It's lumpy. But it tastes so good. It is delicious. 12 out of 10. I'm finish eating this kebab. Bon appetit. <laughs> bon appetit. Hello, Azor and culinarians. We are here for the cocktail portion of the show. We're going to make some happiness juice. Uh, it has carrots. So in the game, it says you can only enjoy this if you love carrots. But I'm thinking the addition of mezcal is going to make it so much better. So the way we make this is really easy. You take a shot of mezcal and you're done. Or you pour it into your cocktail shaker. Uh, you add three quarter ounce of carrot juice, three quarter ounce of lime juice, and then I'm adding a half ounce of cinnamon syrup. Now this isn't anything fancy, this is simple syrup, which is sugar and water boiled together. 
that added cinnamon too. So it's very easy to make. Um, you can just go with the cinnamon stick if you don't want that much of a strong cinnamon flavor. Put all that in. A couple dashes of bitters. I'm using orange bitters. Uh, any kind of citrus bitters are going to work for this. Add some ice to our shaker. And then what I like to do is take a lemon and do that around the rim of your glass. Whenever you're doing any kind of rim, citrus works really well for this to get the uh, rim to adhere. I'm using salt and pepper rim for this. It should offset a lot of that sweetness that comes from the cinnamon syrup. Then I just strain that into the glass. Thanks, Mom, for the Bon Appetit Geek branded glassware. It's great. And then for the final touch, just to give a little bit extra zest, I like to take a piece of ginger and I will fresh grate some of that on top of it. Bon Appetit. Welcome back, friend. We are here with the uh, main course of our Final Fantasy extravaganza, and I'm going to be making some yakao moussaka. It's just um, a quick moussaka recipe. It's without the bechamel sauce, and here's what you need. Start, we're going to use some ground lamb. Lamb has a very strong flavor, uh, so if you're not into that, you can do a half of a good quality ground beef. I would do a higher fat content, or you can just do all ground beef. We're going to do lamb. Next is the eggplant, that's the moussaka. We have two larger size eggplants, you need about two pounds, and they're just cut up into little cubes. And then we have a lot of onions. These are two large onions, um, just roughly chopped, they're all different sizes. We got some parsley, I think this is, what is this? A third of a cup of parsley, um, some salt and pepper. The spices you need, of course, are nutmeg and cinnamon, the more traditional ones, oregano. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. We have your ricotta cheese, your feta cheese, two tablespoons of minced garlic, and seven tablespoons of olive oil. It's going to be okay. The eggplant needs a lot to drink. So what we're going to do first is get the eggplants ready to go in the oven. Uh, so put down some parchment paper or some um, foil just to make the cleanup easier. Dump this onto the baking sheet, don't drop it. It's okay if you do that. This is a lot of eggplant. But we're going to use a four quart uh, baking dish, so that should be good. Okay. Alright, now just dump the uh, olive oil. Oh my gosh, Some salt and pepper. You want to put a lot of salt, it's going to feel like a lot, but they need it. And I put a lot more pepper and salt. And then you just get in there with your hands. I like to get dirty when you're cooking. And you're going to put this in an oven, a higher heat oven, 400 degrees, for about 30 minutes. We're going to roast these. And then we're going to I'll meet you back at the stove to start cooking up the rest of this stuff. Adding one tablespoon of olive oil to a hot Dutch oven. Then the two medium chopped onions go in and let those cook for about five minutes. Add the two tablespoons of minced garlic. And after about a minute, you're going to add the one pound of ground lamb. Break that up and cook until brown. Then the can of whole tomatoes and two tablespoons of tomato paste are added. Your spices are up next. That's two teaspoons of oregano, one teaspoon cinnamon, salt, and pepper. Give it a good stir and crush the tomatoes with the back of your spoon and let it all cook down for about 15 minutes. All right, we are back. We're going to finish up our moussaka. We've got our yummy lamb tomato concoction. I just want to throw some pasta in there and be done with it. Our eggplant looking nice out of the roaster. Uh, now we're going to do our cheese topping. This is going to replace the um, traditional bachamel sauce, which is very uh, hard to make for me. So first, I'm going to crack an egg into a little bowl. 
and then we'll put this is 15 ounces we're going to use almost this whole container we need about 12 ounces of ricotta cheese Dump that in. Next is uh, six ounces of feta cheese. I'm using the already crumbled. Uh, I've also used, made this with the block and just crumbled it myself. Whatever you've got. Just dump that whole thing in there. Uh, a little bit of salt. And a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Traditional ingredient. Just mix that up. You're going to break up the egg. Uh, you're supposed to let your egg sit a little bit to get it to room temperature. I didn't sit that long. I let it sit for about 10 minutes. Eggs at room temperature makes me a little scared. So, All right. That is all mixed up. It kind of looks like cottage cheese. Now we're going to start putting together. First, I have a buttered four-quart baking dish. You're going to start with your eggplant. Dump that all in. And just spread that out. And an even layer on the bottom. It doesn't have to be in every single spot. It's going to kind of mush together in the boiler. And then our lamb. I am going to make this in just a pasta. It looks so good. It's not a graceful way to do this. Dump it on. It's fine. Oh my gosh. Smish it down. Oh, this looks so good. And that last our cheese. Okay, we're going to try to get this just an even layer and not make it turn pink. Can we do it? Probably not. We're going to try. So, the easiest way for me is to just glob it all the way around so you don't have to spread it out like all from the middle but you know what if it turns pink it's fine it's still going to be delicious all right all that cheese all right here we go take the back of your spoon kind of mush it Sometimes you tuck a tomato under and then you get on top and stick it. You can move your pan or just like me, just dance around it. That's fine. Whatever you do, see there's some paint. It's going to be fun. Not too bad. Alright, it looks like that. It is ready for the oven. I've got the broiler ready to go. I'm going to put this in for about 10 minutes. We want this to be um, dark, like golden brown, kind of bubbling up on the sides and on the top. And we'll come back to taste. And we're back. I'm so excited. The finished moussaka. Let's see how hot this is. I want you to see, though. It's look at beautiful. that. Beautiful. Beautiful. so good. I don't even want to like mess it up, but I'm going to. Uh, I'm happy to mess it up. I'm ready to dig in. <laughs> right now. Oh, that cheese under the broiler. Oh my gosh. That's just delicious. Oops. Oh. I mean, I, you can't I, blame I, them. <laughs> Come on. Get down. Down, down, down. No moussaka for beagles. No beagles were harmed in making this video. You probably get in the <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Bon Appetit Geek. Bon Appetit Geek. Mm. If I could marry Musaka, it'd be this one. It is so good. Exactly. I'm so sorry you don't have anybody. That's a sad time because this is fantastic. Yes. I only hope the yakao moussaka in the game is the safest. I'm going to say it is. I'm going to say it is. <laughs> At least when my culinary advice is. Yes. 
Except no, I never make a high quality anything. So oh, <laughs> this is so good. Hello and welcome to the mocktail portion of the show. Uh, today I'm going to be making for you an Amra uh, Lassie. I can't actually get Amra here in the U.S., so uh, all the research I did said it tastes sweet and sometimes a little sour. So what I'm going with is mango, because mango Lassies are always great. Uh, so basically what you want to do is take a bag of frozen mango chunks, dump that in a blender, Adding a cup of Greek yogurt. Got a tablespoon of lime juice for the sour. Two and a half tablespoons of white sugar. And then this looks to be eight to ten mint leaves. Set all together in the blender and blend it. Alright, so we blended that till it's smooth all the way through. Looks like it's a good thick consistency that you want Alaska to be at. Just pour in your glass. Drop a little straw in it. for the best part, the dessert. Yes. <laughs> We're going to be making Sideritis cookies um, or honey and tea salted butter cookies. And here's what you need. We have got um, 160 grams, that's about a half, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. 100 grams of salted butter, this is just shy of a full stick. Um, we've got 30 grams of honey. This is turbinado or raw cane sugar, and we have 60 grams of that. That's about a quarter of a cup. One egg yolk, just one teaspoon of baking powder, and here is the sideritis tea. This is what it looks like in flour form. Uh, and then I'm just using a coffee grinder and made it into this product. So, uh, let's get started making these cookies, cookies so we can get started eating these cookies. Yes. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our butter to uh, the bowl of a stand mixer with the paddle attachment, or you can add it to a mixing bowl and use your hand mixer if that's what you've got. Good and stuck here. So uh, it's going to be it room temperature, just nice and soft and fresh out of the fridge. It makes a lot of extra work and it uh, makes it harder for your dough to come together. So we're going to add that and just let our mixer paddle it for just about 30 seconds just to get it all soft and creamy. Okay, we've got our butter paddled to where it's nice and creamy and soft. So now we're going to add our sugar. Yeah, that's a little more clumpier than regular granulated sugar. So it gives it that a nice dark flavor. And then our honey. <laughs> I always like cookies and recipes that have honey or molasses in it. I think it just gives it an extra, yeah, I don't know, molasses. extra something. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we're going to add our tea powder. So weird, like fluffy. It, it's fluffy. really weird. Looking. It's really weird. <laughs> I don't normally cook with tea powder. No, usually if I'm doing with something with tea, it's just like straight out of a tea bag. Yeah. Uh, so. so we're going to beat this together for about two minutes. We're going to do that on medium low speed. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've given that about two minutes, and now we're going to add the rest of our dough ingredients. We're going to add the egg yolk. Uh, and mix that up some more. Um, we're going to do this for about another minute um, and we're going to use our scraper here just to kind of scrape down the sides of the mixer as this mixes just to make sure that there's not stuff stuck to the sides that's not getting egg and basically all mixed together. There's a lot of sticky ingredients in there. Yeah, a lot of sticky <laughs> stuff. And then 
our last step is to take our flour and our baking powder, we've already combined them here into one uh, container, and just dump those in and mix that just a little bit. Uh, you just want to mix it until it comes together into a dough ball. Um, you don't want to over mix it. If you do, your cookies will be tough, and it might be cool to be a tough cookie, but we don't want to <laughs> eat them. So. Very true. Okay, so ours has come together. Uh, we've actually got two bigger clumps of dough ball, uh, but where it's mostly sticking together, we know we're done. So we're going to stop this, and then we're going to transfer our dough over to an airtight container. Um, if you don't have like a gladware or Tupperware or anything that like seals, um, you can do this with um, a bowl and well-placed plastic wrap, but you want to try to get as much air out of there as possible and, and make it nice and airtight. Or you can put it in um, a quart size bag of plastic bag to press down all the air and seal it. Alright, we're going to put this in this bowl and then we are going to rest the dough in the fridge uh, for about an hour. You want to do that so your butter re-solidifies. Um, that'll keep if you've ever been on Pinterest and seen those cookie fails where people's <laughs> cookies just go all over, the, um, <laughs> all over the baking pan. Uh, that's what happens if you don't give your dough time to rest. So don't skip this step. It might seem dumb, but it, there is a purpose. Yep, so we'll be back in an hour. Okay, we are back with our cookie dough. We've taken it out of the fridge. It's been in there for an hour. And here's a trick when you are rolling out your dough. Never use flour. Now, first of all, I'm going to say, this is not my trick. This is um, from the great Alton Brown. Do not use flour, use powdered sugar when you're doing any kind of sugar cookies or any kind of cookie dough. And you put it between two pieces of parchment paper to roll it out and it makes it so much easier. So we're just gonna roll this out to about a half an inch. It is gonna be really tough to roll. It's a very dense dough. So just take your time, roll it out. All right, and just feel on the paper. You can kind of feel the thickness. Uh-oh, I see it. You see it trying to come out the other side? That's okay. We'll bring it back there. All right, when you get it to where the thickness you want, you just take off one. And yeah, it is It is a blob. It's a blob shape. It's fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> just kind of make sure it's smooth. And then we'll bring it over, um, bring Rachel over. She's going to cut out some cute shapes. Okay, so now we are just going to cut the cookies out into the shapes that we want. Uh, we've decided to cut ours out into little moogles. You can use whatever shape you like, obviously, uh, even if you just want to cut them out into rounds. Uh, that's totally fine, but these are meant to be cut. So I'm just going to press my cookie cutter in here. If you're using a cookie cutter with a more intricate design like this, I always recommend just kind of lightly pressing and then uh, finishing up with a paring knife or another small knife just to make sure you don't mess up your design. You'll also see I've dumped my, uh, dunked my cookie cutter in the, some powdered sugar and that's just to help it not stick to the dough. Um, again, with more intricate designs, it's important to do that otherwise your cutter will stick and you will lose the design completely or you'll end up tearing it a lot of the time. So we're just going to uh, press the rest of these out and then we're going to move them over to our baking sheet. We're not quite ready to put them in the oven yet though. As soon as we get these all cut out and transferred to the baking sheet, we need to put it back in the fridge, uh, actually the freezer this time, uh, for about 20 minutes. And again, that goes back to that whole, you don't want to put warm or room temperature butter in the oven. Uh, if your ingredients are too warm, then that'll change the way your cookie bakes. Don't ask me why, it's a lot of science I don't understand. But if you put ingredients that are already warm in there, then your ingredients will just kind of splute out and you won't get that even bake. Um, your butter, your fats will run out. So we'll put those back in the freezer for about 20 minutes. Then we're gonna pop them in the oven uh, and bake them until they're golden brown. And we're gonna bake them at 350 degrees for 10 minutes. But with any cookie, I always say keep an eye on them. 
uh, check for the texture and the color that you like your cookies to be. So I'm going to finish cutting these out and we'll take them over to the freezer and then the oven. All right, we are back with our cookies. They are finished. They are adorable. They are ready to taste. They're the cutest little moogles. Uh, as far as plating, you just pull them out of the oven, let them cool a little bit, and put them on a plate. They're super easy to serve. Yeah, this is a very delicate cookie though, so uh, just be careful. All right, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. This new shape. So cute. He's gonna bite him. I already tore his head off. Sorry. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. That's really good. That's very dense. It's very good though. It's not too sweet. It's dense like a shortbread. Yeah. And then the flavor of that tea is just mm -hmm. really good. It's really good. Yep. You're gonna enjoy your little moogle. Mo mo <laughs> Happy moogle. All right, we did, we did it. it. That's our final fantasy meal. Like my first dungeon. I'm still <laughs> impressed that we did it. Yes. Oh, it was, it was so We didn't much wipe fun. it off. We did not no, wipe it off. No. No. Uh, no, it was good. It was good. Everything yeah. was delicious. Yeah, it was. Uh, I loved it all. I say, I say this every episode. I know. Like, Everything's I can't my decide. favorite. It's really good. It's almost like we choose the recipes <laughs> or something. Our favorite um, things. Yeah. So what what was everybody's favorite thing? I'll go with the moussaka. The oh, lamb it was, was amazing. Yeah. The cheese was great. It was oh my gosh, so good. It made me cry. It was, it was delicious. It was. I'd actually never had moussaka before, yeah. uh, and that was a fantastic introduction to yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. I can't imagine that it would be better if you did make the long bechamel sauce because uh, no, it was I mean, just super good. Uh, why ruin it? I mean, it's already delicious. Why add an hour to your life? Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, so I'm going to pick that as my favorite. I will say, though, everything else, uh, strong contenders. The mm -hmm. cookie, the Sideratus cookie, was uh, delicious. Um, I can see myself like eating those with a cup of tea. Just, yeah, it seems like a nice, I, I know that maybe that made me sound like an old lady, but it sounds good. Uh, it's fine to be old lady. The drinks were really good. Like the uh, mango lassi smoothie was really good. I liked that a lot. Um, mm -hmm super good I, yeah everything was good but I'm gonna give the Yakal Musaka my number one vote this week yeah it was delicious I think um, it's also one of my favorites uh, but I'm gonna say the happiness juice yeah it was my favorite the uh, the salt and pepper the ginger it gave you that little hot feeling it was great so I had an idea afterwards of how I could modify that in the future and I was thinking carrot cake so add some nutmeg and a graham cracker rim that, oh that, would that would be good. That would be really holidays, good. That would have been great. Yeah. That uh, that can be the uh, rarefied happiness juice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, all right. Well, if you made any of these, uh, we'd love to see how it turned out. We'd love to hear about it. If you want to fight with Jeremy about his episodes, uh, or not episodes, opinions on <laughs> any of the previous Final <laughs> Fantasies, um, go ahead and tag us using hashtag Bon Appa Geek. Um, we'd love to see how your food turned out. Um, we'd love to see how you made your cookies. If you had fun Final Fantasy cookie cutters, mm -hmm. um, hashtag Bone Up a Geek uh, on pretty much any social. Yes, um, and I just want to say you should make those. You should make everything. This was so good. But yes, we're on all of the socials. We're on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, we're on Reddit, and we're on TikTok and Instagram. All at Bone Up a Geek Show. Yep, show is important to put in there. Um, for the most part, I think it's just us, but uh, if you don't put show in there, who knows what it's, you would yeah, get. It's so, not us. Um, we also have a website, uh, boneappageekshow.com, and there we have a blog with all of our recipes. That way you don't have to take notes while you're listening to our videos. Um, yeah, everything is all linked down below, our website and all of our socials, and somewhere up above here, I don't know which side it's on, and the little i-card uh, is going to be linked to one of our previous episodes, which I guess this one's going to be our Critical Role New Year's Brunch, which if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend checking it out. I had so much fun. We're in our pajamas. It was a ton of fun. It's a it great way to spend uh, a morning or an afternoon if you haven't seen it. Give it a watch. Yeah, yeah. So that's up here. Uh, we also uh, now have a brand new coffee. If you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee, uh, you can do so. It is Bon Appetit Geek Show. Um, and also, since we are a new show, when you're, if you're down there and you're looking at the description box, if you wanted to just like and subscribe, that would be great. 
All right, well, we will see you guys back in two weeks. We'll be back with our episode about uh, Agretzko, uh, my oh, favorite man. Sanrio character, our angry little red panda. <laughs> Quick question. Yeah. Cocobo or Chocobo? I always say Cocobo, I, but we all, uh, we have acknowledged, I cannot pronounce things, so don't <laughs> take my word for it. Uh, one time I was reading a recipe and the word Danish was written out and I was like, what does Danish mean? So oh, do not ever take my advice I on pronunciation. That. Mine was geography. <laughs> Perfect. Which in a school project. Or uh, Arkansas for me. Arkansas. Oh. Arkansas. 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 I think you've all been there. Great. That's great. Yeah. Um, well, come watch us pronounce things wrong in two weeks. Uh, we'll probably get things extra wrong because it's a Gretzko, it's Sanrio, it's from Japan. So uh, we'll be working with foreign language and rest of it uh, This episode, if we, if we mispronounce anything, just leave it down below. Let us know. Be nice. We, we, we tried. We tried. Uh, so don't make us cry, but uh, let us know if we got something wrong. We, yeah. we don't want to go out there doing it wrong. Right. All right. We'll see you in two weeks then. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.